Um, the first company up is Lateral Labs um, and uh, the Ministry of Children and Family Development, um, Sharon Armstrong. Uh, Lateral Labs is Vancouver-based, and uh, they are a full-service app and web development consulting firm that builds software and uh, uses the principle of use uses the principles of user-centric design, high adaptability, and future maintenance. Um, they work with clients to optimize workflows and create disruptive innovations. We like that. And uh, explore the untapped uh, possibilities by using new tech. So Derek, Derek Yao and uh, Sharon, you can uh, come up to the stage. And they will run you through today's first presentation. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sue. Hi, so uh, we're here to talk about our in-care placement mapper. Um, it's been a great pleasure to work with, uh, with Derek and the folks at Lateral Labs on this um, really exciting initiative. For years in the field, we've used manual methods such as whiteboards and spreadsheets to track placement vacancy information in communities across the province, a process that is um, obviously slow and cumbersome. Social workers have been asking for an easier way to access information about placement options. Um, so that their focus can be on the actual work that they signed up for, social work, um, direct work with families. Our challenge statement was to develop a web-based system that could remedy this. And uh, the challenge statement is, is uh, in the first uh, slide there. With representatives from a variety of divisions within the Ministry of Children and Family Development and with our service providers, this vision statement was created to create a bed inventory management tool that provides real-time information on bed availability to support matching children in care with the best available housing options. So when we first started working with the ministry, um, there was a lot that we needed to learn about the process and about how to work together and about what the social workers currently do and how we could create a tool that adapts to them rather than forcing them to you know, um, adapt, you know, adapt to a tool. So we held a series of discovery sessions um, to just figure that out and talk with Sharon and um, different stakeholders about that. Um, through that discovery session, we came up with a few personas and a few workflows and some um, uh, screenshots for a, a tool that we think could potentially help. So here's an example of... The personas and roles. Yeah. <laughs> um, so through the use of the focus groups, um, we, with uh, the Ministry of Children and Family Development Resource Social Workers and with some of our contracted service providers who operate the placements, um, we identified the main users of the system along with their personas and roles. So a resource social worker, it's in blue, is a social worker who explores placement options for children in government care. A resource social worker home liaison, or RSWH in green, is a resource social worker assigned to liaise with certain placement options and the matching of children to be placed in those beds. A service provider in pink is a contractor funded by the Ministry of Children and Family Development who provides placement options for children in government care. This is an example of a journey framework used to map out the workflow, the various system users, and it's built on the personas and roles that we just talked about. And we'll be going through a little bit of this later in the, in the demo. Um, Sharon, you want to talk a bit about these? So we wanted the system to display the unique features of the places of service operated by each of the contracted service providers, and through focus groups and feedback, we developed POSIs, place of service indicators. Examples of these are language spoken in the home, pet accommodation, and um, the ability to manage specific behaviors. We also wanted the system to distinguish the unique care needs of the children without identifying them. So we came up with um, some, B some BIs, which stands for bed identifiers, and these relate to physical health, mental health, behavioral and developmental features specific to each child. So really these are meant for the social workers to be able to search um, placements easier with different criteria, as well as um, sort of give some more information about the child they're trying to place without um, identifying the child specifically for privacy concerns. Um, these are just a, a few sketches that our designer uh, made, some low, low fidelity wireframes that we were thinking through, you know, different ways to represent data and different ways to represent um, a dashboard of sorts or a search panel so that uh, it would be easier for social workers to, to find what they're looking for. Um, we utilize the Agile from framework to guide our project. Uh, well known in the tech industry, but not so much within the Ministry of Children and Family Development, lots of learning. Um, this framework promotes solutions evolving through collaborative and iterative effort. Um, and it means the ability to move from vision to a minimum viable product in a very short time, less than 16 weeks in this case. Um, the MVP contains as many core features as possible within the short time frame. And um, I'd also like to, to say that there's been some real mutual um, 
learning. So I think the folks at Lateral Labs um, have been involved in such a you know, meaningful project that's gonna make a big difference for children and youth in the province of BC. And um, for the ministry, we've learned um, we can be really innovative in our approach and um, that we can problem solve in different ways than we are used to using. Absolutely, as an app development firm, we've done a lot of projects with a lot of different types of companies, um, but this is the first time working directly with government, and uh, specifically with the Ministry of Children and Family, it's been sort of a heartwarming experience in a sense because we know that the work that we're doing um, hopefully will ultimately lead to potentially a placement of a child, which is, which is a pretty big deal in, in my mind. So it was a pleasure for us and our, our, our staff working on this, and uh, yeah, so that's been great. Um, we're gonna give you a quick demo of this. So, if I could, uh, thank you. Okay. I'm gonna have Laurel here drive the demo. We're gonna do our best here with what we have. You might need to tap to the first thing. Sorry, we're just gonna set up here. Even super smart people with technology uh, <laughs> need to feel a lot better. I actually think it's because it's a PC. Ah. <laughs> it, it does it does make a difference, yes. Um, we're on the wrong tab as well here. Uh, go to the tab. There we go. Okay. So uh, this demo is going to start. It's a little bit interesting because we've got three different roles represented here. Um, so we've got the blue role here, and on the top right corner you'll see Sam Internal that represents a resource social worker, so that's someone who's trying to place a child. Um, on a separate window, which we've colored with green, um, just so that it's a bit easier to represent, um, you see Kenny G up there, and <laughs> he's the resource social worker home liaison, and they're the one responsible for liaising with the service providers. And so they'll be doing a bunch of approvals and things like that. And then on the third tab in pink there, um, just again for color reasons, uh, we have Jane Business, and she represents a service provider uh, with the province um, that would help take care of these children. So uh, real quick, we'll start with the Sam Internal. And this is an example of a quick interface he might see um, in searching for a placement. Um, he may look for, you know, something in Abbotsford, say, for example, on the, he can put in the start date. and then click the search button. When the internet finally <laughs> crawls out. <laughs> okay, so we have some internet problems here, but otherwise, that's good. So we've got, um, we've got a quick dashboard now here. This is a search panel that uh, the social worker might see. Um, almost similar to how, what they would expect from a commercial booking site, um, but it helps to inventory all the different places of service that are available. Um, on the side there, on the left, filter results, those are the POSI tags that uh, Sharon had been talking about, and it helps to filter down uh, results. So say, for example, we might look for a place that's dog-friendly, um, just because we like dogs, and that should further um, pair the list down. Um, and we can continue to you know, uh, keep paring the list down until we're, we're, we're satisfied, but it seems like the first one there looks like it's, uh, it'll do for us. So this, uh, this place of service seems to take care of um, a lot of different things. We have a bit more meta information about that place of service over there that's fed in from different government sources as well. Um, if we're happy with this, we can see there's a one available bed right now, so we can add that. And there we go. And uh, if we open our current request, we can see that that has been added to our request. If we wanted, we could go back and keep you know, shortlisting more and more things. Um, but we're probably happy with this for now, so we could add a few um, BI tags, which Sharon was talking about, which are bed indicator tags. These help to identify or give some more information about the child without 
actually identifying who they are. And this helps the service providers and different people to better understand how to take care of them. So we can submit that request. It's great. So now uh, Sam sees that it's awaiting approval from his RSWH, which is a Kenny G. <laughs> and so we'll be switching over to that tab. Um, and if Kenny clicks on the incoming requests, he'll see the places of service he's responsible for. Clicking on that, he would see the, the request that Sam gave and an approval process there. So it says he's approving approval. He'll just go ahead and approve that, which now goes through a chain because then it, it now it hits the service provider. So when we go to uh, Jane Business, that pink tab here, and uh, hit on my requests, there we go. So now we see there's a pending request for Jane to approve, and uh, she will also approve. And that will then allow the, um, the service provider and the resource social work um, home worker to kind of have a call and talk to each other. And if everything is good and the placement is confirmed, then Kenny G here will um, go back to uh, just refresh this page. Oh, right there. So now she will just approve the discussion. And we do see that that request is approved. So this is really good, Sam. Um, if you go back to Sam's tab um, and hit my requests, you will see now that uh, it is an approved request there. And um, yeah, this is just a very simple workflow. But that, it just kind of illustrates how we could sort of digitize the, um, the very manual process that all these sites are doing. Um, and overall, what this will help us do in the future is um, gather data, and data is really important because with the data, we can then do lots of different things like predictive, you know, uh, like predict how much supply we might need and or um, do reports on utilization and, and um, you know, cater specific services towards different children, things like that. So yeah, I think that's the quick demo we have. Do you have anything else? To I just wanted to say that, um, so all of that can happen quite quickly and once people get familiar with the system, it'll be a couple of minutes and you'll up will pop the placement options. That's actually a process that can take hours, if not an entire day um, right now. So this is gonna cut, curtail um, that, that work. Um, yeah. Yeah. So aside from just cutting the time, um, the more important, more important thing is actually the sharing of information, so that there's now one central repository for all the different jurisdictions of social workers to look at, and so they can look at just like one single source of truth rather than all have their own whiteboards, which are not in sync. So yeah. Yeah, and and um, that's a good point to, that I didn't speak to, but one of the great pieces about this eventually is going to be a the data pull that different levels of government can do inside the Ministry of Children and Family Development. For example, if our minister wants to know how many places of service we have in this uh, contracted continuum, she can plug in you know, the entire uh, province and up will pop all of that information. Um, so it's, uh, cool. it's an So that's job. it for us. Thank you so much. Hurt my neck, and uh, are we? Is it just alt tabbing? I know. We need to. Don't we need to pull it back off the? Sorry. Is that adage in tech? Fail fast. So that's what I'm doing right now. We just need to pull that back off the screen. Right. That's what we were doing earlier. Awesome. There we go. It was there. It was there. Sweet. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Thanks for that. Thanks for the help. Uh, so thanks, Derek and Sharon. Um, it uh, this project is is um, it's so real, and you can see the clear benefit um, of of how this can help out. Um, to Sharon's point about going from maybe spending a whole day. Uh, trying to make this decision to having that information at your fingertips right away. Um, certainly, I think we can all appreciate how that sense of urgency is important when you're dealing with children. Uh, 